ma chère Albertine. I arrived in Montréal by ferry Friday morning. Ma cousine Lydia was waving to me from the dock, all dressed in the latest fashion. From the ramp, we could see the marketplace bursting with activity. Together, we crossed the square, both of us talking at once, amidst a great commotion of vendors and their wagons. My cousin had to leave to give her piano lessons and promised to meet me at the end of the afternoon. The day was just beginning as I went walking in the city streets for the first time. There were shops for everything and each window displayed a different kind of merchandise. Little by little, the awnings were lowered, and the streets filled up with electric streetcars. Men hurried to work, and beautifully dressed ladies passed me by on the wide cement sidewalks. I didn't know where to look first. It was also new. All at once, I remembered my cousin's advice and decided to take a tour of the city in the observation car. We rolled along spacious avenues and passed beside beautiful parks where Montrealers, both old and young, were taking their leisure. From time to time, gentlemen in motor cars came our way, looking very pleased with themselves. Elegant ladies in stylish hats attracted many looks, just as though they were on their way to church. The city was like a dream. Three cars stopped at the inclined railway which goes to the top of the mountain. I followed the crowd. The climb made me dizzy. I stopped to catch my breath in front of the panorama. But my heart beat even stronger as I looked out over the city. So huge and so strange. Just then, a young man accompanying his niece invited me to visit the park in his carriage. I did not say no. The excursion was delightful, and the company as well. All too soon, the ride was over. I was sad to leave my new friends, but then I thought of Lydia waiting for me nearby. Outside, the shadows stretch across the sidewalks, and my boat was already moving into dock. I was full of dreams. And I promised myself that very soon, I would return to Montreal. 